did you guys know this? There are three buckets where all the leads that you ever need will come from. Three buckets, right? And I'm not going to ask you to guess them. I'm going to tell them to you. Now, um, my man over here, y'all know, y'all know my man here? Huh? That's my man Pedro, y'all. What Pedro says, and I consulted Pedro, he says, if you focus on these three buckets, all of your wildest dreams will come true. Huh? Y'all got some wild listing dreams? Huh? All right. I'm going to show you how to focus on these buckets. It's going to make it real easy for you. It's sphere of influence, number one, your farm and your niche. Your sphere of influence, your farm, and your niche. Right? How many of y'all know you should be doing this already? By the way, when you think about the three buckets, think about the, a tripod stool, okay? You know, a three-legged stool, uh, this is four-legged, I can't use it as an example, as an example but a three-legged stool that's perfectly balanced and you, you step on top of it, will it support you? Absolutely, it's a balanced stool, it's a tripod. Now you take one of those legs out, what happens? You fall, or if you, if you take two of those legs out, what happens? Cirque du Soleil, right? Huh? You're doing all this kind of stuff, right? Most of you have a one-legged stool, and that one leg that you have is busted and in disrepair, <laughs> right? That's why you're not getting listings. And the one leg that most of you guys have is the sphere of influence. Most of you are not farming, and most of you don't know what a niche is and don't have one, right? We're going we're gonna to cover that today. All famous people, by the way, have a sphere of influence, a farm, and a niche. Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. They have a sphere of influence. And by the way, the more famous you become, the bigger your sphere of influence grows, right? <laughs> Some of you guys that have never even uh, met me face to face but might have heard of me, you feel like you already know me because you've, you've heard me, you know, you've seen me around, if you will. So, and that's what being famous will do for you. And, and, I, and, and I would say that. Don't think of it like being haughty or proud or big-headed. Being famous does not require any of those traits, okay? Jesus was a very famous person, and he didn't have any of those characteristics. Right? He's still famous today. Now, your sphere of influence, because retaining a current client is more important than generating a new one. Did y'all know that? You, you do it like this, like, yes, you know, but you, but you really, but you don't treat it this way in your business, right? If you abandon your clients, your competitors are waiting in line to orphan them. Mm -hmm. So here's your sphere of influence. These are people that are your past clients, people you know, and people who you've met. That's your sphere of influence. Seven out of ten sellers, seven out of ten sellers, right? How do they pick the listing agent they go with? Seven out of ten. Right? This is based on NAR. Right? Seven out of ten chose an agent based on referral by a friend, neighbor, or relative, or they used a previous agent. Seventy percent. Is that, is that right? Yes. Seventy percent. So why are you spending the majority of your money on new stuff? Oh, I got this new leads program, or I'm buying. That, you're going after the 30 percent. You are spending money to attract strangers and abandoning the people that love you. That's dumb. Dumb with a capital D. Dumb. <laughs> dumb. Isn't that dumb? You're spending all your time and energy and money on strangers when you got 70% of the people that already say they, would, they love you and they want to do business with you, right? That's your SOI. 84% of people say they would use you again. What percentage actually do use you again? Much lower. 20%. This, 20%. Anyone else? 40 or 11. It's between 9 and 13%. Yeah, it's be, some, 11 is a good one, right? So let me ask you this. Anybody like to use Yelp when you, when you decide to eat somewhere or something like that? Somebody, some of y'all use that? So let's say you pull up a steak restaurant and they have a 4.5 star rating, 4.5. Are you eating there tonight? I mean, they have 236 reviews, 4.5. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to eat there, right? Now you pull up another one, they got 238 reviews, they got one star. Are you going to eat steak there? No. Right? Do you realize that by abandoning your, your past clients, by abandoning them, you go from a 4.5 star rating to a one star rating? Did y'all realize that? 11% say actually do use you again, but actually about 9%, right? But, 
but 86% say they will. That's 4.5 that's out, of, out of five. So if you're going to make $100,000 this year, 70,000 of it will come from these people, this sphere of influence. If you don't keep in touch with them, how much does that $70,000 bucket dwindle down to? It's about 10,000 bucks, right? Why are y'all uh, leaving so much money on the table? Hmm? Why are you refusing to stay in touch with your, your sphere of influence? Raise your hand if you have a database already. Keep it raised if it's up to date and current, fresh, right? Some of y'all lying. <laughs> You're lying up in here. Some of y'all do have it up to date? You just did it, right? High five. Who, who else just did it? High five over there, right? Uh, some of y'all have a jacked up database, right? You're trying, to, you're trying to protect, most agents, I teach you guys all the time, so I know, right, that how you guys are. Most of y'all have a bad, really bad database right now. It's, you got people on there that fired you. Come get your sign and lockbox, I'm done. They're still in your database. You know what I'm saying? You haven't cleaned it up. So you gotta do that. Now, I'm gonna give you, the reason why most of you aren't doing this is because you lack an easy to implement plan. That's what I'm gonna give you right now. It's gonna be super simple, right? I use what I call the KISS method. Y'all ever heard of the KISS method? Who, who you calling stupid? You call me stupid? Huh? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, sweetheart. Or keep it super simple. That's my favorite. I call it two glasses of wine simple. I just had my second glass, and I still understand what he's saying. Huh? Why, do I have to, why does it have to be so simple for you guys? You won't do it otherwise. Do it if it ain't easy, y'all won't do it. That's the bottom line, right? They say if you want something done right, do it yourself. Well, for realtors, that's what I say. If you want something done at all, don't do it. Hire somebody. Because <laughs> if I leave it with you to do, it won't get done. Right? Is that right? Yeah. Right? This means right. This is yes. Uh huh. Right? I, I don't, I don't want to beat you guys up, but I'm, I want to I tell you, you don't have to be, you don't necessarily have to be better than you are at, you know, uh, the paperwork and all the other stuff that you shouldn't be doing anyway. Just hire somebody else to do it. <laughs> and then you instantly become good, right? Here's an 18 touch plan. This is what we use at the Nolly team, right? We do 12 newsletters, okay, that comes out every month. Once a month, we have an e-newsletter that goes out. Uh, we send four postcards a year, right? It's the same postcard, guys. We don't try to get creative and make a fall card and a spring card. and Because if I taught you to do that, you won't do it. At the beginning of the year, you've got 250 people in your database, print 1,000 cards, send the same one out every quarter, right? By the way, do you have to, our, our, farming is different, but do you have to really, really sell your past clients in sphere of influence? No. You just got to remind them that you're still in business. Oh, yeah, he does sell real estate. I forgot. You know what I'm saying? Right? Otherwise, you find out they bought or sold a house without you. Right? Every three, every three months, you do that. And then twice a year, you're on the phone with a personal phone call. This plan takes you a couple hours a week to implement at most. The, the newsletter is set it and forget it. Right? Uh, we use More Sold's database. It's a, one that I created, and I now make it free to agents to sign up and use. Um, as far as the, the postcard, that's super simple, right? Give them to Barbara, she sends them out every quarter. Done, right? Or give them to your, your, your niece, your, your children, or whoever, somebody down the street, you know, a, a neighbor friend. And the two phone calls, you make those. You can throw in a New Year card once a year if you want to. This, will keep, this simple plan will keep you in touch with your sphere of influence, right? Now, this is more souls on the back of the book. You'll see that. If you guys want to try that, it's a free CRM that we created for our team because we couldn't find one that was easy enough um, for Barbara and her owls to use, right? So we created one, and we just made it free to everybody else. Now, the second bucket that we're going to talk about, the second big bucket is farming. Anybody have any questions about sphere of influence? Y'all all get that, right? Makes sense. And it's an easy-to-implement plan. By the way, did you know that you don't, going back to sphere of influence, you don't have to touch your sphere of influence 33 times. Did y'all know that? <laughs> oh, it's very, 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 very. You know why Gary, and some of y'all know this, you know how Gary came up with 33 touch when he was doing the research for Millionaire Real Estate Agent? Do y'all remember that, how he came up with the number 33? They just guessed. There was no data. 
because y'all suck at keeping in touch, right? <laughs> so he just came up with a number that was crazy. The, the reality is most of you don't do a three touch, right? And I guarantee you, if you touch your, your sphere of influence 18 times a year, they're going to hear from you pretty sufficiently, right? Now, if you're doing 33 touch, that's, that's even better, right? But then, then they're like, Mike, I just saw you at church last week, dude. Why are you sending me these emails? How are you doing today? Man, I just saw you last week. It can be too much sometimes. You see what I'm saying? So the point is, get it done, do something, snap into something, right? But when, when they came up with that and Millionaire Real Estate Agent 2 is about to come out, I'll be real eager to hear what the data is now on that whole thing. The point what Gary was trying to get us into was action of doing something, right? Farming. How many of y'all are doing farming? Okay, some of y'all are, everyone should be, okay? A farm is a territorial region that you basically go out, you choose in order to build your business and build your brand there. That's what a farm is. I'm gonna show you how to set one up today. Here's, it's an easy formula. Y'all get this? 500 plus homes. It has to have a steady turnover, at least 7%, okay? Average sale prices is enough to support your goals and it should be nearby, okay? Now, Farming is one of those ways that you could actually increase your average sale price. Anybody want to increase their average sale price? Huh? Some of us have seen our average sale price go up just by staying in the business, right? Remember back in the day, Diane, when we were, we were listing a house for 92,000, 98,000, and now that same house is 250 or 350 or whatever, right? We just stayed in business long enough and saw, but there's another way to do it too, right? Farming. Because it costs the same amount to market to the hood. Huh? as it costs to market over here. Huh? Same amount, right? You could, you could market to the hood of the good, same price, right? So you market in places where you want to live. Huh? I want to live there one day, so I'm going to start marketing there, right? You may not live there now, right? But you can choose, you can, market, you can farm anywhere you want. It's up to you. I'm just saying it costs the same amount of money, right? Now, how do you go about doing it? You know you can door knock about 50 to 100 homes in an afternoon, right? Not me, I, I, I door knock about 12, right? Because we'll be talking about the pets and what they have for dinner. I like to make friends and all that. You know, it's, it, don't do that, don't do the Nolly method. But you can do it 50 to 100. Go out there once a month and do that. Have an item of value, that's a kicker, okay? And what I like to see is like a, a calendar of events, um, things that are uh, going on, places where, they, where kids can eat free, right, and the days they can eat free. Uh, things like, you know, the, the best happy hours in Austin, maybe that's not a good one for everybody, yeah? <laughs> not everybody, you know, should get that one maybe. Um, but think about a good uh, item of value. Brand yourself, okay? This is non-negotiable. 30% of your marketing piece should be your photo and your logo. Anybody have a problem with that? I got no problem with it. It's like 30%, 50%. No. But you should brand yourself because that's what farming is about. It's about getting out there. It really is about running for mayor of that, of that farm. Okay. Um, here's some farming examples. Uh, I like this is, is a monthly calendar. You can get together with a great title company uh, or a great lender like Kaysen, and they will help you to put together the count, like what's hot in Austin, and you send that out, or you, 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 uh, you hand that to uh, the neighborhood. Uh, here's another example. How much is your, your home worth in today's hot market? Find out free, alloveraustin.com. People want to know what their home is worth, um, and usually they might be thinking about selling, or and you, you, you give them an offer to a free copy of your book. By the way, you can make that an e-book. People can just download it that way as well, right? Um, farming, get it, it's, it's about getting involved. It's about running for realtor. That's, that's what you're, you're doing. Carrie Thompson for your realtor, right? She's serious about getting the job of being your realtor, right? And that's how you guys should be. Open house a lot. Now, some of you guys don't like to do open houses, but open houses are great, especially if you do the level seven, level seven open house that Gary teaches in Shift, um, where you have directional signage, balloons, and all this, and you turn that open house into an event. It could be a wine tasting. You got, you got uh, uh, three wineries there. I mean, it's an event. It's like a neighborhood event. You can't do that with every house. You can't do it with that house, right? Maybe this, that house, you're like, no, I'm not going to do it. But, but you make them more of an event, and you make it something that people want to come out to. And really, it may not be about selling that house because we know that the house itself may not sell through the open house, but it's about you being visible 
in the neighborhood, the communities that you serve, right? Um, every door direct mail, uh, that's, that's another big one. By the way, um, let me go back to this slide right here, getting involved as realtor, uh, running for realtor, you're talking about city council, HOA, PTA, Neighborhood Watch, church. Let me ask you this. If you were running for mayor, what would that look like? God help you. <laughs> you're running for the office of mayor of Austin. What does that look like? Farming should look the same way. Does that make sense? Right? Now, don't go picking out a church because they got, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to this church, boy. I like these cars up in here, boy. This is a nice one right here. Huh? You walk into church, you got your Bible and everything, and then your business cards falling on the floor, people picking them up. Oh, you can keep those. You can keep that one. That's all right. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. Don't pick the church you go to for farming opportunities. Right? Nolly doesn't teach that. I'm just saying. This is probably what's kept me yeah. in the business. For what's years. kept you in the business? Go for it. What? You are not 80. Stand up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get, get. You've been in the business 40 years? Yes. Wow. Just about 40. Wow. I have to get my calculator out. All right. Let's get. We, I have used, like, selling Austin since 1977. And, but now it means I'm too old. No, no. You're a treasure, but I go ahead. I wished I had somebody like you when I first. You hear what she said? She said she wished she had Uncle Nolly. Oh, All right. That, mm. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And Thank I go you. Back to the days, probably you never, most of you never heard of Zig Ziglar. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember Zig. Well, he was when I first, and he said, list to last. List to last. Thank you. So as I'm slowing down, I've had a farm area, which is about 200 and some homes yeah. in my own neighborhood. Mm. I've been in that neighborhood for 30 years. I've been on the uh, homeowners, it's a voluntary homeowners association for probably 20 of years of that time. Wow. And so that's, that's been wonderful for my business. Yeah. yeah. And when I have an open house, I, when I have a new listing, we put it open the very first week or before it's on the market. And I have gotten many more sellers from the people that come to the open house. To the open house, house. right, and right. They just like the you know, they do cookies and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and they like the way I present the house. Yeah. So when they get ready to sell, they call me. We're going to team up and do a class together. I love that. I love you know, th this, is, this is what I'm talking about. And you've been in the business 40 years. Um, I really appreciate that. And especially for agents that are quote unquote new to the business. This really is a gift, right? Someone that's teaching Well I like what I do. That's yeah. one of the things. Right, right, and, right. But again, I, there's other things. I have thirty six great grandkids. Woo oh. thirty six great grandchildren. Oh. Wow. I am famous in my neighborhood. You're famous, yeah. This stuff works. And I still am because I have a partner in yeah. make up the cards. I've got a good printer that you know, puts it together and everything. So everything you're telling here, and of course some of us have been around for a long time, Yeah. but a lot of the new people in the business, there is just gems in what you're... Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I awesome. did not pay her, guys. Let's, let's give her a round of applause. I had that, that, that is the reason why I do what I do. That's the paycheck that I will never spend, yeah. right? I mean, I, get, I, I used to have a guy who would pay me $5,000 to come in and teach for one hour, sometimes two hours. And y'all know I can run my mouth for one or two hours, right? I can't tell you what I did with those $5,000 paychecks, honorarium and fees, but I can tell you what I'm going to do with what you just gave me. That's, I'm going to treasure that for the rest of my life. That's the paycheck that I will never spend, and I really appreciate you. Thank you. I had another gal came to my class, and she said she'd been a realtor for 30 years, and it was the best class she had ever been to. I'm like, you don't go to a lot of classes, do you? Just kidding. <laughs> or you haven't been to a lot. But, but it is, it, it's, it's, thank you. I appreciate that. I do receive that from you as well. It's a gift for me. Thank you. Um, so the, the third thing I want to talk about, guys, well, let's, let's talk about EDDM, and then we'll get to the third one. I was going to ask you a question. Yeah. About ask. EDDM. Um, is there any way to, instead of actually going through the post office, can you get like one of those postage meters and have, do your own printing so that way you can spend 18 and a half cents? 
So the question is, so the question is, can you do, can you have like, there used to be Pitney Bowes type printer and go through that. Um, with EDDM, they do have a process where you have to bundle them in 50s and they're not addressed or anything, so you just take them to the, um, I don't know that they have a system where you can do it from your office or from your home office. Um, I think you actually have to take them down with the paperwork filled out a certain way and then they'll do it that way. But once you, once you get, log into EDDM, Every Door Direct Mail, and you set up an account, it's pretty easy to, once you have your route picked, right? Th these are less than 20 cents each. Now let me, let me uh, give you an example. If you were to farm 500 houses and you were to spend, even if it was 20 cents, how much is that? A hundred bucks, mm -hmm. okay? Now, let's say it, you had to print those and you use Got Print, G-O-T-P-R-I-N-T, Got Print, the, the game that I've been using for almost 10 years, you'll pay like, let's say you pay 40 bucks, right? For those 500, not even that much. No, it's so it's way cheaper than that. So you're, you're at 100, let's just say you're at $120, right? Uh, now, all of a sudden, you, you go to uh, four sponsors, you know, uh, it could be a handyman, it could be a lawnmower service, whatever, and you split that in four, right? So you, you charge each of them $30. How much did you spend for that 500 postcard mail out? 40. Four times, zero, right? Because each of them paid you 30. How many, how many handymen would like to tag along on your marketing piece to 500 houses in that neighborhood? You know, probably everyone you come across. So all of the marketing that you do like this should be sponsored. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's called sponsored marketing, right? I told you I'm gonna teach you low to no cost. Make more money and save time, right? So EDDM is a great uh, tool. Now the third thing that I want to get into that you guys are, um, need to be a part of is a niche, a niche market. So here's the question. What do you offer that most of the agents in the room do not? Why should a client use you versus the person sitting next to you? This is the answer that a niche market or this is the question that a niche answers, okay? Why have a specialty? So let's take the medical industry, right? A specialist makes about 100,000 more a year than a general practitioner, right? And general, general physicians have about 30% more annual visits and they're twice as likely to work nights and weekends for 100,000 less. Why is that? They're buyer's agents. They're buyer's agents. <laughs> Hey, we got some buyer's agents in here. We love y'all. Come on and sell one of my listings. Just kidding. They have the one thing that we can refer it, yeah. They're, they're sought out, they're in demand, and they're relevant. Okay? Every one of you should have a niche. I'm not saying that it, that it has to be your entire business, right? It's a division of your business. It doesn't have to be everything you do. Most of y'all thought I only did short sales, right? But the ones that did the accounting at our office knew that short sales were really only about 40, 50% of my business. I just made it look like to all of you guys that that's all I did, right? Because it was a niche. And any niche that you have, it should look like to the person that you're, people you're marketing to, like that's all you do, right? Any niche that you have. So, but it's really a division. So what will you specialize in? This is your third bucket. It's not your only bucket. You got your sphere of influence rocking. You got your farm in place and now you've got your niche. It could be luxury, right? It could be homes on one acre plus. It could be for sale by owners, as Ken does. It could be uh, builder properties, that you list builder properties. You could, you could specialize in divorce sales, okay? Listing homes with divorce and have a lot of divorce attorneys that, that are in your coffer. Give them a copy of your book, put the divorce attorney on the back, and then have them pass out the book to their clients when they're coming in for, uh, you know, for divorce. And divorce is like a three for one. Did y'all know that? Right? It's kind of sad, but usually you got a house to sell, and then they get, both got to buy. Right? And you got three deals. I'm not saying it's a good niche. I'm just saying it's not bad, right? Uh, probate is another niche. Um, I have, I have a, some friends of mine. Um, i got a buddy of mine, Stuart Sutton, here in town. He, does, he, he owns oneacreplus.com. He sells houses on one acre or more. If you have a house on one acre or more, call me. Why would you call that guy that does cookie cutter houses? Now, is he better at selling houses on one acre or more? No, but it looks that way when people look at it. He's like, he's got oneacreplus.com, right? So he must be better, right? 
Um, I, we know a lady, uh, my wife and I just had uh, dinner with Deidre, and she has what they, they call the church ladies. Guess what they specialize in selling? They sell churches. You know, there's people that sell islands. Did y'all know that? There's realtors that sell islands. Like, that's what they do. Well, this lady sells churches. And guess what? Churches ain't cheap. Huh? I looked into it. Then I looked out of it real quick. Right? We have a client right now that's, that's uh, about to, we're, we're working on a $1.7 million church project. And it's not a fancy church. And that's what they, they call it, the AtlantaChurchLady.com. If you need a church in Atlanta, you call her. She does churches, right? So a specialty can be anything. I've got, I've got, you could have 100, but just pick one, right? That's going to be the one that you do. Blow up in that. You put a realtor over that, and then you blow up in another one. Then you put somebody over that. Um, uh, Diane and, and Melanie know when I was doing short sales, the last, um, I still do them, but the last probably 500 houses we listed, I never saw any of those houses, right? I had one guy ran that division. You know, I had... I, I was never here, like I just, but I, but I blew up the division um, and, and, I, and I let them run it, right? So the bigger your business becomes, by the way, the easier it is to run. Just want you to know that. Now, here are the three, the three buckets, your sphere of influence, your farm, and your niche, your specialty. From these three buckets, you'll be able to generate all the listing leads that you ever need, right? Let me show you how that works. How many of you want to do... Six listings a month, at, at least six listings a month. Nobody? OK, right? Let's say you want to do, let's just pretend you want to do six a month. Is that low? Yes. Is that too low? OK. Well, look at there. You said, man, you got to go a lot higher than that, right? Exactly. But I'm going to give you the example. So what you'll do from your sphere of influence, you're going to go with, you're going to get three, two from your farm, and one from your niche. Does that make sense? That's what you do every month. A lot of you guys are like, oh, you're trying to get all your listing leads from one bucket. It doesn't work that way. You spread it out. How do big businesses get big? They have a lot of little businesses in there, right? Every big business that you look at, if you really unfold them, it's a lot of little businesses that make up a big business, right? Now, if you want to do 10 listings a month, you just change your numbers. You could do five in your sphere, three in your farm, and two in your niche. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Six to 10 listings a month, and this is kind of the formula that you want to follow in order to do that. Any questions? Right? The three lead buckets. Don't I make it so simple? I make it real easy, right? Yeah. I try to do that for you guys um, and for me. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is winning with video. Uh, 